the, what's going on here. Hold that side. Hi everybody, welcome back. My name is Ryan Love again with Unified Fire Authority, bringing you week number three of recruit camp for class number 53. It was an action-packed week as the recruits learned everything they need to know about fire. The chemistry behind it, uh, the fire behavior, the stages of fire growth, fire dynamics, flow paths, and even warning signs. Uh, we also learned how to throw ground ladders and how to manage ground ladders as well. So we've got some great footage for you this week. Stick around, let's check it out. Hi, I'm Sean Garrett, uh, training specialist with Unified Fire. And uh, today we've got the flashover simulator right here. So all 32 recruits are gonna get a chance to be able to sit inside our flashover simulator. Right now there's 11 of them in there. It's flashover is a phenomenon with fire behavior where the space where there is a fire burning in a compartment, it's gonna fill the space full of smoke or fuel. Okay, the smoke is one thing that we teach our recruits that smoke is fuel and it is flammable and it's going to fill the space, the heat is going to increase, uh, and then eventually when we have training cadre members control the openings, we fill the space up with enough fuel, we fill it up with enough heat, then we literally will have the whole space be filled with flaming combustion. So that sounds pretty scary. Uh, it is an event that uh, firefighters need to be aware of. They need to be aware of the precursors, the different warning signs of what's going on, and realize that the attack lines that we take into a structure if it is on fire, that if we utilize the fire streams correctly, we can cool the space and we can keep a space from flashing over. Uh, so right now they are in there, and if you're watching the smoke coming out of the building, how this works is this elevated platform that we have here. We just take a barrel and we fill it full of this fencing that you can see over here. And we also line the walls with the MDF, so it also is a combustible or, or a fuel source that we use light the barrel on fire and we get everybody in and sit in this this lower platform and there are benches on the inside of here where they're sitting so everything that's happening is above their heads so we're filling the space full of heat and fuel above their heads they're able to look up if we keep the door shut we will start to bank down the smoke uh, they, they will feel the heat when we do have the flashover event in the simulator, we do have temperatures uh, that exceed 1,000 degrees. And we're able to, with our attack line on the inside and controlling our openings on the, on the prop, we'll get anywhere from five to eight flashovers with a barrel full of sticks. My name's Heidi Wimokley. I'm a recruit with Unified Fire. We're here at the UFA training grounds, and we're inside the flashover trailer. Before we came in here, I was nervous and I had some reservations uh, because last week we did the construction burn. And with the construction burn, it got really, really hot. Um, it was really hot to touch inside of our turnouts. And even part of the metal on our masks felt really hot against my face. Um, so before we came in here, knowing that flashovers happen around 1,000 degrees and we were going to be in here for about half an hour to 45 minutes, I was definitely nervous. Um, but after coming in here and learning how it all worked, 
it really wasn't so bad. So we sit on these benches, which is a level below where the flashover occurs. And so when it's happening, you can actually look up and watch the flashover happen above you. And while it was warm, it wasn't nearly as hot as the construction burn since we were sitting below the level of the heat. It, uh, it's a really good visual presentation for them. Earlier today, they had their fire behavior lecture, so a lot of the light bulbs are starting to click. All the things that we talked about in the classroom, they're able to see. Uh, they're feeling the heat. Uh, for a lot of the recruits, this is, a, you know, whether they have fire experience or not, this is the first time that they've ever experienced a situation like this or an environment like this where they can't see, they're feeling all the heat. Uh, they definitely, the first group that went in, you could tell they were a little nervous, but once they get in there, they realize that it, it is a neat experience and you're seeing the stages of the fire where it, you know, we ignite it, it grows, it develops, it fills the space. And then how much control we have over that environment just with a simple opening, like a window or a door. Uh, we legitimately control the flashover and the temperature reduction and increase by opening a door on this end of the flashover prop six inches to 12 inches and that's it. Uh, when we do have a flash event, the precursors and the warning signs just before that as the smoke is dancing up above your head, those pockets of gas and fuel in the smoke will start to ignite when they're mixing with the oxygen below it. And as we create a, a bigger opening with the door six inches to 12 inches, we call those snakes and they're literally just, it's flaming combustion dancing above your head and they look like snakes in the smoke. They'll start to intensify and eventually everything above your head, all the smoke, all the fuel will just be flaming combustion. We can sustain that for a few seconds. They'll feel that radiant heat coming down on them. They'll get super uncomfortable. And we have an attack line in there that will open up and just spray the fire stream on the ceiling. Uh, just kind of reduce the temperature in there, kind of knock things back to normal for a second, close it off and then we'll fill the space with fuel again. The fuel being the smoke that's coming off of the barrel. Uh, my name's Terry Woodward. I'm 53 years old. I guess I'm the old man of the group. Uh, retired state trooper. Uh, first time really dealing much with fire other than vehicle fires on the freeway. Uh, was a little uh, anxious coming into this, more curious than anything, because I haven't ever experienced this type of stuff. Uh, the heat was pretty good in there. It was really interesting to see how fast that smoke rose and fell and how the temperature rose and fell. Uh, and then it was, uh, it was a little uh, unnerving seeing those uh, fire snakes come across the top of the ceiling, but uh, it was really kind of a cool experience, uh, something I'll never forget. Engineer Molly Doyle out here at the UFA training tower with class 53 um, and today we are getting the recruits behind the wheel of some of our fire engines. Um, so things that we're teaching them right now are just basic safety. So a lot of them haven't driven anything this size before. It's a lot different than driving just your average passenger car. So we're just starting with the basics, making sure, um, you know, First and foremost, they're always wearing their seatbelt, always doing everything properly out here, throwing down wheel chocks, making sure we're going, um, just following all the safety procedures. And then once we get them behind the wheel and we have them driving around, we've got them doing just a couple little cone courses out here. So one that we have set up is a diminishing clearance. So we've got cones on either side and it's to simulate driving down a narrow street, maybe with vehicles on each side. Um, and then another one that we have set up today is our alley dock. So just approaching, spotting where you need to back into, pulling forwards, and then backing up safely. So one of the reasons we have these guys learn to drive out here is um, in a week or so when we start running scenarios, we'll be dispatching them as companies on fires. They will start in their regular station uniform. We'll dispatch them, they'll go get turned out, get to the rig, and pull up to our burn building. So. We just have them, we want to make sure they have a basic, just general understanding of getting it there. We'll eventually be teaching them how to put it in pump, how to get water to the nozzle and all that. Yeah. Um, so when these guys get out in the field for their first year, they, they shouldn't see the front seat of one of our heavy apparatus. Um, they'll be behind the wheel of an ambulance, but as far as fire engines and fire trucks go, they won't see that until their second year when um, we'll be putting these guys through our engineer school. Um, so at least when they go into that, after a year on, they'll have a, at least know how to turn the rig on and get it down the road. Hi, my name is Colby Hymas. I'm a recruit, uh, 
part of class 53 out here at Unified Fire Authority. Today we're learning how to drive the fire engines. I've never drove anything even close to this big. Um, one of the obstacles we have to do is called the diminishing clearance obstacle and it's um, supposed to simulate that you're driving down an alley that's getting narrower as you go. And so with that obstacle I'm just going to keep the cone on my left hand side and try to not hit any, hit any of the cones. Like I said I've never driven a rig like this so we'll see how it goes. All right, so this is our new Flashpoint Fire Dynamics, uh, really cool prop that we use indoors. Uh, what this is basically simulating is just different compartments within a space, uh, very similar to the dollhouses that we build out of OSB and uh, plywood. But what we're able to do is in inside, we can fill these bins full of uh, clean burning fuel. Uh, we're using denatured alcohol. And the different compartments as we light them, It'll heat up. We got the fireplace glass here on the front. Uh, it does get hot like a fireplace. And what we're simulating is just showing how openings within a structure, whether it be commercial building or a residence, openings really dramatically affect the fire behavior going on on the inside. So what we're showing the recruits and any other firefighter is how we can control the fire or flame spread from compartment to compartment by either controlling doors shut or what happens when we open it. And that's basically all we do. We light one, piloted ignition with a lighter, and then just through this space heating up, this space heating up, this space, it fills that space full of fuel. And then as we open things and close things, we basically can control the fire spread and flame spread throughout this prop. Yes, Watch out. Okay. Yep. I had enough circus reefer now. <laughs> <laughs> what do you guys think? Yes, oh, sir. 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 Continuing with our uh, show and tell day with our Recruit Camp 53 and Fire Soup. Uh, what we've done here now, we've brought them outside. Uh, we're going to show them a few props. The first prop we'll show them is the wall prop. What we've done is basically built a wall. We've kind of divided that into the center of that on about 16 inches. One side of the wall is completely kind of plugged up minus the bottom where we've left it open where we can ignite from the bottom. At the top of the other side of the wall where we've separated it, we've put a small little hole, but we'll stuff newspaper in there to kind of plug that up. We'll, we'll light it on fire below. Let that fire kind of run up both sides of that wall for about a minute and a half. After that kind of gets sustained, we'll then pull the newspaper and show them what that looks like when we have openings inside of a wall or we've got space that lets air in. So we're kind of almost in a unidirectional flow with that and it'll keep torching out, the, out that hole on that one side. The other side has been still completely closed off for this whole entire event. And then what we'll do is we'll go ahead and pull the newspaper, it'll burn out. We'll put it out with a water can and then we're gonna take the front off of this entire wall, and we're gonna show them the difference between the side that was closed off and the side that had a hole in it. Yeah. You guys ever seen videos of the dollhouse like that? Yes, I didn't do a pitch on this one. We do that a cock rock, we do that Right now we're going through our dollhouse, so it's just a basically miniaturized house uh, with compartments, individual compartments. Um, this is teaching the recruits flow paths, very important, especially in a regular sized house. Uh, the physics of it, the fire's gonna behave relatively the same, so we can get some of the same principles for them to understand. So uh, by shutting the front door, 
where you can kind of smother the fire a little bit and then opening up other exits, other windows kind of gets it going again. So it's important for that same reason, just so they can start understanding these things, start seeing the bigger picture. Just for a second. Hey, open number three. Leave it for a second. Open number two. Now we're making a travel. Goals number two. Open the top. Cap the roof. Goals number three. This allows you a straight arm, a stable base. Same thing, I can hear. I got control of this the whole way, right? I want to come back up with it. I can just let it slide in my hands and push it up. It doesn't, doesn't sway back and forth. I want it to come down, kick it in, and I just let it slide. Slide on down. All right? Yes, sir. I, want it. I have control of it. And I'll ask that. That wrong thing is okay. It just does this. We'll just take a look at it. Hey guys, Robbie Anderson, training specialist. Uh, we're out here today working on ground ladders. Okay, this is the end of week three. So this is day four of week three, um, working with the recruits this week on ground ladders. Um, we've got three different stations set up. They're, they're three weeks deep into this recruit camp with vigorous PT every day, so fatigue's starting to set in. What we're working on today is um, just a basic introduction to ground ladders. We have three stations set up. One is ascending a ladder with tools and deploying a roof ladder. The other one is uh, ladder carries and throws. And then we're also working with ladders in the open as far as vertical raising, working on those balance points. Um, it's a really good introduction to these recruits. Um, like I said, being fatigued, they're getting used to the weight, um, the, the mechanics of throwing ladders, how to use proper body mechanics when you are fatigued to properly deploy ladders. Um, it's been good for them, but like I said, this is just the starting point, basic introduction. This is going to build and build and build. We're in, we're in the crawl, walk, run phase of this. Um, just an introduction, throwing ladders, and getting used to having them on their shoulders. All right, and that's a wrap for week three out here in Magna, Utah with recruit class number 53. Thanks so much for watching along this far. If you have any questions regarding this recruit camp process, be sure to leave a comment below, and we'll get back to you as soon as we can, and we'll see you next week.